That's crazy. Did that catch me? I'm trying to figure out how to <laughs> <laughs> we have a new setup here in uh, the Lopez studio. Yes, we do. Oh, is this the volume for the remote? Don't, for the, don't uh, mess with anything. I'm not. Don't I'm just anything. asking if that is volume for our mic. I don't. Okay. I know very little about the new setup here. So just don't push any buttons. I wasn't going to push I the button. Yeah, but you, you got real close to the button. Oh, my gosh. Real close is not pushing. Okay. Anyways. Calm down, uh, calm, calm down, calm down, calm down, oh my gosh. Uh, so welcome to the Lopez Sit Down. That was welcome. a very long way of saying hello, welcome, thanks for listening. How are you doing? It is you doing? way too late for us right now. Uh, do you want to tell the people how um, irresponsible we're being right now? No. It's 12.45 in oh the my morning. Gosh. What in God's name are we doing? So really what it came down to was we've had next to no time to record our podcast. Mm -hmm. And it just worked out that this was the time for us to do it. Kids are asleep. This is priority. See, we made it a priority. So we are scheduling time in at an obnoxious hour. For you. For you. For you, all you... We are parents of you know, three. Ten, ten listeners. In our 30s. Staying up past midnight, almost one o'clock in the morning because we love you. We love you. And we're insane. That too. <laughs> so I told him though, I this doesn't feel right because we don't have our cups of coffee in front of us. And, and she I'm, literally wants to like make coffee right now. I literally want to She's make coffee insane. right now. I even have decaf just so I have that like nice aroma so I can feel awake because I don't right now. We're not going to do that. And here's, why? And here's why. Why? Because of the liquid white gold that we have in there. Yes. And that it's you fantastic. you always so willingly try to just give away. Because it's beautiful. Every, okay. No. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot just give away our half and half at any like. But I can. That's why we buy it. So we no, can share I the buy wealth. It so I can drink it in my coffee. And when I buy it, I buy it so that we can share the wealth. God gave us these things so that we can give out. I don't even know what you're saying. Right I don't now. even know what I'm I saying. Yeah, it's like 1245 in the morning. <laughs> you're, it's 1247 now. Ooh. Okay, so hey, Stand let's get corrected. let's get to this thing. Um, I have a uh, question from Nordic underscore Liam on Instagram, which I just found out tonight is a friend of one of our youth students. Yeah, um, from Alaska, right? From Alaska. That's yeah, really which is fun. interesting because I was looking at um, on our little host uh, where, where our podcast gets hosts. I was able to see um, where people are listening from, mm -hmm. and obviously, like you know. All of it was from the United States and then and then up in Alaska, which is, you know, part of the United States. But nevertheless, it was uh, up in Alaska. We had mm -hmm. a couple downloads and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And we have friends up in Alaska. So I just assumed that it was our Alaskan friends from up there. But come to find out it is we're uh, reaching people that we don't directly know. We don't directly know. That's so fun. what's up, Nordic Liam? What is up? Um, and so this is the question he asked and it, it is directed um Towards you. Toward me. me. Uh, maybe because he can't find you on Instagram. Well, that wouldn't be abnormal. If if, if you want to follow Nancy, <laughs> don't even bother. She doesn't post. You should follow me. Well, I'm trying. You're I am doing trying. You're a lot better now. I am. You're posting some good stuff. You're welcome. And so. Um, I'm learning. You post stuff that I'm like, when? Like, I wasn't even. I didn't realize she was taking video or taking a picture. Because like, that's just. I'm trying to be aware. So mm -hmm. I realized that you are a words of affirmation kind of guy. Yeah. And that you and a gift to you is when you can have pictures taken of you doing things and of like moments in time that you cherish. Like you probably wouldn't have even known otherwise, I guess. I'm just noticing that you like it when you see pictures of like you with your kids no, or you preaching or and so that's cause true. you'll either ask somebody to take one for you or whatever. So I'm trying just to whenever I, I'm trying to be a lot more aware of opportunities to snap mm -hmm. a picture for you no and it's great i do appreciate that you're welcome um you are a little slow to the draw sometimes yes i know <laughs> nancy still has not figured out and i still i don't even think she knows what i'm talking about that you can swipe to the right uh, no i know i and know it go, takes you right to your photos <laughs> but for whatever reason every time you try to unlock your phone 
<laughs> and find this stupid find this app. stupid camera and app. i miss so many and moments you, I'm like, and then and, and she goes she goes wait wait do it again wait wait do it stands <laughs> like okay it's moments gone like that doesn't know it's not how it works but but i do appreciate it because it's like back in september kaden and i went up to seattle and went to see a seahawks game mm-hmm. which was a dream come true yeah it's a father's day gift from my bride and from my children which anyways it's a whole nother story in itself mm-hmm. but it was a great moment but kaden <laughs> and i were walking in our Russell Wilson jerseys. Um, uh, shout out Russell Wilson if you're listening. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> he's, de- he's definitely not listening. <laughs> oh, he but, is. But uh, anyways, we're, we're in, our, in our jerseys and our Seahawks gear. And we're walking um, to the stadium. And we walk past this couple. And, um, you know, whatever. Not even. Not, don't even think a second. Th- th- take a second thought about it. And like a few minutes later, she comes up to me and she kind of catches up. She's like, excuse me. Like, um, I couldn't help it. I'm so sorry. Like, I, I, I you, you and your son walking together were was the cutest thing. And I had to take a picture. <laughs> can I have your number so I can send you these pictures? Mm-hmm. And if you go look at my Instagram and scroll back a while back, you'll see these pictures of me and my son that just like would have never been taken <laughs> if it wasn't for this random right. lady. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, that was that was so cool. Like such a cool moment, you know? Right. So I take back everything I said about Seattle people because oh my before, gosh. okay, just kidding <laughs> anyways, but it was a great moment. And so I do appreciate go follow Nancy at Nancy N A N C E I Lopez. Um, and she, she's doing really good. And I'm doing better. I'm, you know, you, I remember it, you saying that you say, it's funny you say doing better. Cause that's the culture we live in where it's like, if you're not posting, then you're the worst. And it's like, no, it's okay. And it's okay that you mm-hmm. don't post Nance. Like I, I, I do, you show, you love me and you love other uh, people. You're the reason I ways. even do it. So I'll be honest because like, actually I just had a good conversation with a friend of ours that um, just came from Bethel to uh-huh. help pour into our church this weekend. Uh-huh. And he made a really good statement that he kind of stopped and got, uh, laid back on the whole Insta thing because he was like starting to feel guilty if he didn't. Yeah. And I'm like, I never want that pressure. And I never have wanted that yeah. pressure. I don't nec- I'm not, I'm not your consumer person. I'm not the person's going to go with the up to date fads because it's a fad. You're not like, going to do it because it's, cool I'm not going to do it because in. it's cool or in, I'm going to do it if I believe in it or if I feel I want to, like, I'm just not somebody that I've never been one to go with the grain. Usually at least not at first. You have to, I have to really believe in it. So anyway, long story short, I, I'm doing this because I know that you have a value for it and I'm gaining a value for it because of your value in it. So, but it's not something that I feel I have to rule my life by or, and I don't feel guilty if I don't do it. I feel guilty if I don't take a picture, if I realize that I've missed an opportunity to, to record something that would have been special or momentous to you, but it's like, that's it. It's not because I didn't post it to Instagram. It's because like, Oh dang, I should have had my phone out. That would have been a really cool picture. Um, but that's because I love you. And that's but. fine. But, you, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's all, you know, you, you it's all held in tension. Yeah. Like, because there's a balance to everything. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I feel like if you're a person that just doesn't do it, like, you're probably better off on that side than a person who's always doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, and I probably fall more on that category where, you know, and, and, and you know, whatever. I, I don't care because I do it because I enjoy it. You mm-hmm. know, like, I record. I, yesterday, my Instagram story was literally late on her. Like, I there's know. only a few videos, in, but every video was Leona and it was just because that was my day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just she's so photogenic anyways. But I go on there and I love watching your videos and I, and I realize like I like seeing and when those what are they called when it kind of gives you back a memory from like, a, oh, no, that's Facebook thing. huh? Yeah. Either way, like it's kind of nice to go back and see these pictures. Like, oh, that's actually really cool. And to see how little my babies once were and mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. And it is super sentimental in that way. But um, I just I guess it didn't. I'm just starting to have an appreciation for it. But I'm also trying not to become this where I'm so focused on that side of it that I miss out and I'm not present. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, yeah. That's we can talk about that all day honestly Mm -hmm. the whole healthy and healthy of it but um anyways back to what we originally said to (laughs) nordic underscore liam um what's up thanks for listening listening uh liam and he asks this question He, he he said i'm listening to your podcast for the first time right now and i'm curious as why your wife says papa as opposed to god so far i'm liking it but i'm just curious 
And oh. so I responded um, to him. And so, but I think that is a, a good, you know, th- this is a question that I think maybe other people are, are wondering as well. Um, you know, there's probably a good portion of people I'd imagine that, that are understanding of, of why you would say that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so why is, why do you refer to God as Papa? Well, before I say why, can I ask what you responded to him? I said, because Nance is a freak. And, no, <laughs> um, this is what I said. I said, hey, Liam, thanks for listening. First of all, that's how my wife relates to God. He mm. is her papa. Mm. It's a bit of an intimate thing she has with Father God. Yeah. And yeah. And so that was, it was very simple. And, and yeah. so, yeah. No, it's good. Um, yes, I love God very much. It's really weird to call him God like that with that when I am speaking of him. It's almost like calling your dad Tim. Yes, exactly. Um, because I, just like my dad, um, uh, it is. It's real. I, just, um, I know that it's not a disrespectful thing because my dad's name is Tim. But to me, he's my dad. And with God, it was like one of those. Um, for the longest time, I saw him. Unfortunately, I related to him just and only on the platform of um, commander in chief. When he said jump, I said how high. And I just kind of did whatever it is that he asked of me. Not necessarily, maybe I had a relationship with him, but it was a very surface relationship. It was just um, only to my, the, the, um, my understanding. And I wanted to get to know him on another level because it doesn't only say that he's not, not only is he sovereign, of course he's sovereign and of course he's the alpha and the omega and he is uh the creator of all things i i know that but i wanted to know him as my friend and i wanted to know him as my father and so um in order to do that i started being more intentional about okay well when with the father you call him something endearing and so um i think the first thing the first time it kind of got sparked to me was uh the book the shack so when uh, Mackenzie was talking about his wife and how she calls him Papa, that hit something for me. And I was like, wow, okay. So that's kind of when I went on that journey of, okay, I, I want him to be my Papa. How, where do I, how do I get there? Like, what does that look like and what does that mean? And I went on this journey and now that's, that's how I find him to be. It's a very endearing name for him. It doesn't mean that I don't recognize him as an authority figure in my life, as, you know, the um, sovereign person I still have a, a respectful fear of who he is and his abilities but I'm I love him and I know that he loves me and that everything that he does um is in a place is in, is from a place of love mm. and so that's really yeah, just like my dad my dad um whenever he any decision he's ever made whether I understood it or not or whether um you know naturally he's human so if it wasn't the right decision or whatever he did the best that he knew but is always from a place of love because he loved me enough to correct me sure. loved me enough to um make sure that he had hard conversations with me so that i had full understanding and he also loved me enough to love on me mm-hmm. and so that's who god is for me and so that's where it is that's good i love it and you know it's it's not it's not how i think i always refer to to father god but nevertheless i love that um you know i love that we can approach god Mm -hmm. with our heart like with with kind of our own not our own understanding per se but uh in a unique way yeah that he that that he meets us in that way so that's really good so um hey liam again thanks for listening and again if you guys do have questions if you're listening to the podcast and you're like what does that mean or hey you know um I, I, you kind of just brushed over that topic. Like just shoot us a DM and, you know, we'll try to, or if you follow us on Facebook or if you have our numbers, which a lot of you probably do, um, go ahead and just shoot us a text. And we'd love to address that here on the podcast. And so again, um, you know, follow me. It's Eric, it's the Eric Lopez with periods in the middle of each word. And I already said Nance. And so, um, yeah, that was good. That but was a I good have question. a question for our listeners. You have a question for our listeners. I do. Go Coming back to the liquid gold, as you call it, our half and half and oh heavy whipping cream. To those of you listening, what do you feel? Should I be giving out this liquid gold or should I be coveting it for ourselves? And should I be allowed to have a cup of decaf with this liquid gold in it simply for the aroma and nostalgia of that's usually we usually do this in the mornings. Well, it is the morning. 
technically I should be having my cup of coffee. Here's the difference between them <laughs> asking us questions and us asking them questions. Yes. Is I don't care about their opinion oh. when it comes to my half and half. Oh. And so. It's not nice. <laughs> well, I don't care. I care. And I would just want to know, like, where do people fall on this? Are you guys the same? Like, are you... You know, is the is the half and half like the end all be all in your coffee, or do you even take half and half? Like, what? How do you take your coffee? That'd be fun to know. Okay, well, yeah, we'll like, see. We'll see if people if people uh, message us, we'll find out real yeah. quick. Yeah, or like at home, like, is your how do you prefer your coffee, and then what do you normally order? Because I'd like to start trying out some other people's drinks because I like mine, but I kind of want to know what what's out there. Is that weird? It is weird. No, it's not. It's okay. Oh um, okay, let's 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 move on to the next thing. Um, I think one of the things that I wanted to address on this podcast and and go over is something. It's a word that our senior leader currently is not a fan of, <clears throat> and that is the word boundaries. Ooh, boundaries. And so, and and you know, we. I think we've we've done really well with managing boundaries for a while um and you know i not to throw my senior leader under the bus he he is very firm in his boundaries or or, you know believes in boundaries um you know it's just the wording boundaries definitely that it kind of rubs yes rubs him the wrong way you should explain why because that way he's he could be understood fully well i mean if i give him a bad name that's not my problem. No, but, it is. Um, no, joking. <laughs> I love our pastor. He is amazing. Um, but okay, so so essentially, you know, our senior leaders look at look on it is, you know, and I mean, I, I'm just kind of speaking now as of what I think. I actually don't. It's been a long time since I've had this conversation with him. But the thing <laughs> is, is this, is that there's this word boundaries that entered the church. And, um, you know, there's a book on boundaries. And, you know, the, the, the term and the, the practice of boundaries is from a psychological point of view. Okay. Right. So it's something that if, you know, Christians aren't the ones always talking about boundaries. It's more often like therapists that are saying, Hey, you need boundaries in your life. And so because, uh, people don't always know, uh, i.e. Christians don't always know how to hold things in tension. They'll take an idea like this and they'll use it in the wrong way. Mm. Okay. And so I think this is where, our, where, where our pastor is coming from is that, um, boundaries, the, the, the word is, it, it sounds like something where it's like, I'm putting a boundary or it's a wall and you say out there, don't come and don't, don't, you know, intrude in my life. And so, um, which is, which I agree with, that's not okay. But, um, but I think boundaries though, is not a bad word. And I think that it is something that needs to be in a health in a healthy way practiced in the church and practice, not just in the church in everybody's life. Like if you're a person that does not have boundaries with your friends, with your family, with your workplace, with, with, yourself. with yourself, like if you don't have a hold on your boundaries or, or on boundaries, period, then I imagine you're kind of probably living a life where you're feeling a little bit out of control. I'd, I'd imagine that. And when I say boundaries, and this is something that we learned through um, reading Danny Silk's books and through Good, going through going ministry there, school, um, is this is that boundaries aren't set up to keep people out. Boundaries are set up to keep what's inside of them, inside the boundaries safe. And so, you know, and so it's not when you when you think about it that way, you're not thinking about you're not, you know, because for some people in and, and I'd imagine that you fall in this category a little bit, Nance, is that is that I don't want to put up a boundary because I want to make sure that I'm still accessible to mm-hmm. people. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and and that and that is not completely but I'm just saying, like you would probably for, fall more alongside those type of people that think that way where I don't want boundaries necessarily. And I don't even want to tell people I have boundaries because I want to make sure people know that I still love them. Well, here's the thing. I know that boundaries mean that I do love people. I'm willing to put up perimeters. See, I like perimeters (laughs) better because they're movable. Like a boundary almost like that particular word has a negative connotation, unfortunately, because of the way it's been used. And so I get that. Um, However, and I myself don't like to be bound. I want to know that if I say something, I have flexibility or if I come up against a fence that I can move the fence a little bit further. I'm a pastor, a pasture kind of gal. I like room to roam, but I also like the safetiness of knowing that 
there's a border somewhere that's going to let me know that I'm going to be safe from the outside things. So okay. with that being said, I prefer perimeter, but I don't mind the idea of boundaries because I have, because of Danny Stilk's understanding. And yes, even though it's from a psychological perspective, he, he does a really good job of translating it into um, like life and kingdom and making sure that w- he, we are holding it in tension, but that we are firm in what we say because it helps. It's hard at first because unfortunately people do get offended at the idea of having a boundary put in place, especially when you're in the church, especially when you're in ministry, especially when you're a pastor, you're apparent. There's a, a taboo from the world that says that you're supposed to be accessible 24 seven. And all he's saying is actually there are people who can, like you tell me all the time, I, as your bride, can inconvenience you because I'm your bride. I'm right. one of the very few that have that privilege right. to call on you 24-7, whereas other people might not have that. There's a very select few. Yeah, and that's and that's a good point because you do have the ability to call me, and there may be you know a small percentage of time where I might not be able to answer it right then and there, but majority of the time I'm going to stop I'm going to say my wife's calling me and I'm Mm -hmm. going to answer it because who knows why you need me. But on the, you know, rare case, and God forbid this ever happens, there's an emergency and you need to get a hold of me. Now, all more often than not, it's not. It's like (laughs) something that you could have texted me, but we won't even go there. Um, But you said (laughs) I, as your bride, have the ability to inconvenience you. I know. And so you have now trying to put perimeters on it is not okay <laughs> anyways and or like so, today in youth when i'm like asking you because i have our youngest on me asleep so i'm, I'm trying, trying to not set to, everything up because she's not nice when she doesn't get at least a little bit of sleep so i'm guarding this time yeah. And I understood. So that's why I worded it like when you have a free moment, can you please? And you're like, "Mm, no, I'm sorry, I can't because you put that priority over me and I was not allowed to inconvenience you in that moment. Okay, I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? No. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I don't even remember what you asked me to do. I was something as simple as uh, grabbing me something from my purse. Grabbing your purse. I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. I apologize and thanks for putting me on blast like that. But <laughs> my point being is that, yes, you, you do have access to me in a way that other people don't. And that's OK. You know, uh, people m- don't like to hear that, though. Right. People want to feel like the most important person in your life. And you well, know, me, too. It kind of <laughs> stung a little bit. But at the same time, I can respect that you were in your place of Wednesdays is your your day. Like this is where your focus is. And normally you're pretty uh, multitasking and let it out. But when you you put your your 100 into this and you only get a small amount of time to be able to do this so you're guarding that with everything it doesn't mean that i'm any less important it's just in this moment when you're trying to get these things ready like it's very hard to pull away because you only have so much time to make all this happen yeah. and you only have so much of a team to be able to help you do it or that have full understanding on what to do in order to make it happen right sure. so i can respect that i was not mad at you i mean it's like Okay, like it took it took me back a little bit, but at the same time, I had to remember like this is kind of just with me and my personality as well. My personality type is like, oh, okay, that sucks. But especially because you know, I go back to like, well, he just said I can move at any time, but then I had to think, oh, but actually, this is a moment that's super precious to me. It doesn't mean I'm any less important to you. I had to remember, but you have so little time to get yourself set up for this. And this is something that means a lot to you. Mm -hmm. And therefore that's why I phrased it in the first place. When you have a moment, can you, but I don't think you even heard the, when you have the moment, all you heard is that I had something I needed you to do. And you had little time before people were supposed to be showing up and you needed to get things done. Sure. So, yeah. And, and that's true, you know, Mm -hmm. but, but on the other side of that, what I was going to say is this, is that, you know, people might not necessarily like to hear that because they don't fall in this category of people that can inconvenience me Mm -hmm. that I might let their call slip through Mm -hmm. or, or, or go to voicemail or I might not answer their text right away. And in this day and age when everybody is so accessible with, you know, I mean like 20 plus years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. We weren't as accessible as we no, are today. No, not at all. You know, I mean, cell phones were around and stuff, but it, like the, the to the amount, yeah, pagers <laughs> to the amount that we are accessible today, 
mm. you know, with our phone, but not only our phone, the, the array of apps that we have where people are, where can get a hold of us, you know, like, like it, it's, it, 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 it puts this thing in people's minds, I think, at times where if there, there I have multiple ways to get a hold of you and I need you to answer one. Mm-hmm. Right. And so uh, but because in my personal life, I do have a boundary that it's like I you know, I'm I'm pretty good at answering people's calls and texts. And, and but I do have times where it's like, OK, I'm not going to stop everything I'm doing right now this second. Mm-hmm. And address what you need because there's a list of people and a list of things that actually come before you. I'm not talking about you, Nance. I'm talking about, you know, the (laughs) average person. And that's not because I don't love you or I don't like you. That's because, you know, like uh, I I have a healthy uh, or I'm doing my best to, to uphold a healthy, um, you know, a life. Especially right now, because you your time time is gold right now to us because i mean it's time is money like time is gold because we only have so much of it that's free to us to do anything extra than what is expected of us from the day to day that makes our get helps our bills get met and you and i to have family time all that kind of stuff so you know it's a lot less time available to kind of just give out it's true and and it was i mean it was like today i mean okay now i'm going to um I'm going to rectify myself and redeem myself. <laughs> I uh, went to work out today, and then I realized that your wallet was in the middle console, the middle like console. it often is. But that's my the car that I usually drive. Th- that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> you don't leave your wallet with your ID, your your uh, you know debit card, all these things that would be a, a a nightmare to have to replace. I knew this was gonna come. Okay. Up. And so I saw it in there and I was like, she's going to need this. Like, so I was going to shower at the gym, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to run by where she is anyways. And so and it's by by her house. I'm not even going to shower at the gym. I'm going to take her her wallet and then I'm going to go shower at the house. Mm -hmm. And you asked me to do something else on top of that, which was... (laughs) In inconvenience because it wasn't on the way where I was going, right? I had, and so you said it, what is I on? Can, it's it not was, on the way. Their house is not on the way. Stop. It is though. It's on a different way. Not maybe the most. Not the most. Um. <laughs> that is the definition of not on the way. <laughs> no, it is because you can totally go that way to where you're going. It's just probably not the most efficient way okay. to get there. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. So point being is that I got there. I gave you your wallet, and you asked me, "Can you? Can you? When you know, when you go home, if you have time, can you come back and bring me my laptop?" And that's only because I knew you were going to the house. And so I figured, okay, well, if you can, and you have like three extra minutes to spare because they're three minutes from our house, can you bring that back? Now, I understand these are when this is Wednesday and you have a little bit of time. So I asked you and you had the right to say no, because you told me earlier this morning, don't manage me. So I tried not to manage you in that moment. And I gave you opportunity to tell me whether or not you could do it. And you said yes. And I really appreciated that. And so my point saying in saying any of this, though, (laughs) is that I did that. But because of like the time that, you know, it was a, it was an unscheduled or un, um, what am I trying to say? Just unpredictable. Uh, unforeseen. Unforeseen. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, event that I had to come back this way. And you weren't. You, that's not well for you. you right. Like, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I had planned my day out and taking, you know, that's why I brought my clothes and everything to the gym so I you can shower did, there. You did. And then go to straight there <laughs> for the church. But nevertheless, I did all this. But. The thing that I was going to say was my point in saying all this is that I had also kind of talked to one of my best friends, Glenn, about talking today on the phone. And mm-hmm. we had scheduled like he said, I'll text you when I when I'm when I'm going to call so we can catch up because we our calls got interrupted the other day. Well, when he finally got around because it wasn't at the time that, you know, we had talked about call, uh, talking, he he did text me um, and I had to tell him that because I knew that what I was about to go into was preparing my message and getting ready for Wednesday night. And so I had to set, I had a boundary that I set up and I mean, Glenn is my bestest friend in the world. I love him to death. He's also somebody that can inconvenience He you. can inconvenience me. My point being though, is that me setting up a boundary in that moment and saying, Hey, actually I'm about to, 
I'm, 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 I'm in, you know, dead set in the middle of creating my lesson right now. Um, and I have stuff I have to do. Can we schedule tomorrow mm -hmm. at a certain time, you know? And so all that to say, it's not as painful as it may seem right. to create boundaries in your life. And it doesn't mean you're mean or you're a jerk. Now it's all how you say it, obviously. Right. And in this is, and we've experienced this right with people that they just have this strong, like, boundary this wall of like this is my line it's a hard line and it's not movable mm -hmm. right like that's that sucks like those those people are hard to deal with and it's hard to to you know to 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 to, to operate in whatever they're trying whatever you know whatever realm that that you are involved in them with and so um but it, it's not as scary as it may sound for you know you whether it's whether it's you setting up a boundary in um you know your workplace or with your family and that's kind of one of the areas that i want to you know to talk about because this is something that we've i think we've had to come back to many times is what does it look like mm -hmm. in our lives right Be right because well i've had a few people that have gotten pretty frustrated with me because i'm on the full other side of the spectrum where like i don't even know where my phone is half the time <laughs> i've gotten better about that because i i'm so aware of how stuck in the phone that people are these days that they're not even paying attention to where they're walking and walking out in front of me while i have kids in the car and like thank god i'm paying attention because they're not and so that that totally upsets me or like we're going to dinner somewhere and I look around and at every table there are people sitting across from each other but they're both on their phones not talking yep. and that to me is so hurtful and I don't want to be that person because I have the tendency like I know because I had one game on my phone at one point and I'm like I realized that I was starting to tell my kids to hold on hold on because I needed to get to the next level on this stupid game and I'm like never again or because I was I wanted to post a Facebook or whatever and getting into that realm or like see wh what was going on in somebody else's world and not being present in mine today uh -huh. so I forsook it I even went how many years without a phone for a uh, while there <laughs> too many because so many everybody else around me had it so maybe that's not necessarily the most healthy way to go about it but i proved a point that i don't necessarily need a phone myself is it convenient absolutely is it a little bit e easier oh yeah but i can get away i can get around and i'm not i don't need to be accessible to everybody all the time and that's the hardest thing for people to hear sometimes especially like people that you work alongside or whatever because it seems like w because I'm not answering my email or I'm not answering my phone right away or within an hour, all of a sudden I'm cre I'm causing a sin or something. Cause it's like, I've even to this day, I still have family and people around me that don't understand. Like I have a certain amount of time that I'm trying to guard for homeschool just cause I'm home. Doesn't mean that I'm necessarily available. I have things that I have to get done and a 10 minute phone call here and there adds up or a 30 minute phone call here adds up. But sometimes it's not a have I to get done either. It's a want to get done. Like, what do you mean? Like you said, this is something you have to get done. Oh, yeah. But these are things that it's not just about like it, it is like this kid's got to get their schooling. Yeah. But it's also I want to like I'm doing this for a reason. Yeah. I'm doing this because I want to. Like, yeah. You know, that's the thing like like that people don't understand, too. Like when it, it's like, oh, Nancy's home. Like she has all this free time. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm I'm home because I want to be home mm -hmm. because I've just I made a conscious decision, an in, in, in intentional decision. Yeah. That we're going to homeschool our kids. For sure. And I mean, I've had to tell people like, hey, you know what? I might not be the person for this position or for this particular thing. If if me not being fully available at such and such a time all the time, then I'm not, I'm not the person for this because I'm so much so for being the person to homeschool my kids or um, be at home and doing the things that I want to do here because this is my dream I'm living it out. And it's important that I make sure that I guard that time because otherwise, you know, their education falls to the wayside because it's easy to build things up and talk for a few minutes here and then have to go and do something after that and let it out. And then before I know it, they've been put on the back burner and their education suffering. Yeah. So all that to say, you're right. Like boundaries are super important in, in holding them because sometimes it's hard, especially when you love the people and you want them to feel loved. Or you haven't been able to talk to them because maybe they call at that certain time that you tell them not to call all the time and then you don't ever get to really connect. So you, anyway, there, there's, I think, holding it in tension and making sure that, you know, I do make time at some point to talk to them and let them know and remind them, like, I'm sorry, I'm not available at this time. But if you want to call me from this time to this time, I'd love to talk to you. 
But it's not, I mean, but some people still might get a little bit hurt, and it, but that's not my heart, yeah, is to I mean, hurt them. Well, and the thing about it is, is again, it's all how you communicate, and sure. if you are so worried, if you're doing something like, let's say you're answering somebody's phone call because you're like, oh, they're going to get their feelings hurt, like, that is, like, that is not a relationship that you, you want to be in, It you know, it's like, if you if if you are changing or, or or moving the the boundary markers that you set up to make somebody else this life easier mm-hmm. or feel more comfortable but it's actually creating a little bit of chaos in your own life and the things that the people that should be priority are not i.e our kids then it, something's wrong that might not be the case for somebody else maybe a different personality type like myself, like I'm not as inconvenienced if somebody needs something, depending on what that need is and who it's from. Right. It will make all the difference mm-hmm. for me. So uh, because it's like when I'm, ax- I'm I've am i also tossed around the idea and I haven't been able to bring myself to do it is to put my phone on like airplane mode or sleep mode or something so that it doesn't ring at a certain after a certain hour. But um, it gets kind of hard because I'm like, I feel bad, you know. But even though I know that it's not for any bad reason, it's just so to because like right now our our little one, if any little noise goes off, she's up again. And then I'm up for a couple hours trying to get her to go back to sleep. And then we all lose. So (laughs) So I'm trying to figure this out. But I'm like, oh, there are things that help. And uh, but at the same time, I'm like, well, what if my mom needs me or da 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 da? There are people in my life that I'm like, I want to make sure that you know do have that access to me if there is something going on. Because if my mom's calling me at like, you know, a certain god awful hour in the morning, then something's wrong. You know, she's usually pretty good about making sure that. Okay. Yeah. And and so this is where you and I differ, because my in my mind, this is where I'm like, I, it doesn't matter to me who it is if mm-hmm. I'm getting a call at two in the morning. If my wife and my three kids are in the house, that means that 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 there's just no bigger there's nobody else as important mm-hmm. as you four. It, nobody. Okay. It just is. And that's how that's how like again, and that sounds super harsh, but that is just like how I've set up my mind and my life and whether people agree with it or not. Like that that's not I'm not trying this isn't me saying hey this is how you need to think this is no. me just saying this is what I've set up in my life because I want to make sure that my priority first is these people in my life mm-hmm. and if I'm answering every phone call at two or three in the morning or whatever hopefully you're not getting a lot of those oh, I'm not I'm really not okay. honestly <laughs> but but that's just the thing like right I, I, I'm just that I can't I can't allow that in my life is really what I'm trying to say right and so I'm just not accessible mm-hmm. at every hour of the day mm-hmm. now if you're gone on a trip and or the kids or you know we're out we're out so we're like we are traveling you know mm-hmm. like we a few weekends ago we were in sacramento right and our two um older kids were up in washington right okay that's a moment when if if i get woken up from a dead sleep like i'm going to answer my phone you know especially mm-hmm. if if you know where my kids are it's the calls coming from where my kids are right you know um and so that that's a whole nother thing. And so that, I, that, that, you know, I, I, I think I need to not say any more just because I think I've beaten this thing, beaten this dead. Uh, what's the saying? Beat a dead horse. Be, be like it. Be, You've beat a dead horse. I beat a dead horse. Is yes. that the same? Okay. <laughs> What did, you, I, I feel like you as don't want to beat a dead horse. I don't want. I feel like as soon as I get on here, I don't ha- know any metaphors. <laughs> I don't know any. Like I'm always like, what's the saying? It's like, like trying to write on a whiteboard in front of people. It's the worst. I know. It's literally the worst. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a nice guy. I love my family. You're a very That's nice all guy. I'm trying to say. Okay. I know. And yeah, so I don't want you to be misheard. I think for you, that's what works for you. So people just, I think the big, I think our bullet point here is that boundaries can be good depending on how you choose to apply them and what, and how you choose to go about expressing them. You know, I don't think it has to be like, unfortunately it does have a negative connotation. So go, choosing how to go about it, but, also understanding that some people are going to be offended no matter how you say it Absolutely. and that's not necessarily that then you have to be understanding of like that's an, a heart issue that they need to work out but i think if you continue to keep yourself in a position of humility and letting them know like actually i do love you and that's why i'm willing to you know do this and this is why but because i love myself and, and i need this and la da da 
and they you know eventually they're going to come to understanding as long as you're not being a jerk about it but like if which sometimes we feel like we have to be when somebody's not really getting the picture but it's like just continue to, to speak in love and let them know like hey, i'm sorry if you feel that this is something that i'm that i because i hate you because it's not i just need you to understand that this is what i need right now and we it, here's the thing if if you're doing it the right way and you're setting up boundaries in your life the right way and somebody is being offended by that then those people don't actually know you to begin with mm -hmm. because my real friends and my real family they know my heart behind mm -hmm. setting up boundaries right? right like they know that i'm not a jerk and that i'm i do love them and that i have a good reason for not answering their phone call or having to reschedule something or whatever the case may be. Okay. Right. So now if I am, have a, uh, if I have a, a, um, history of being irresponsible with their heart, then that's a whole nother thing. Right. But if I am a, a, you know, a good friend, a good family member, you know, whatever, we have a good relationship, then me setting up something that, you know, just sets setting up a boundary or, 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 or like I said, changing any of those things, like a rescheduling or not answering phone call or whatever, like you, you will know my heart, mm -hmm. you know, like people sure. who know me know my heart. Right. Right. And so this is not to be offensive. It's just more or less. This, I think this is just our experience and our understanding of this. It's like even, um, Danny Silk, he talks about like, just because you're a pastor doesn't mean that you have to be available at three o'clock in the morning for somebody's issue. That issue is an emergency to that person. If it's that bad in the moment, it's going to be that bad a little bit later from now, I think is what you said before. Like, that's where that expression came from, because it's yeah. like, um, if like somebody's marriage is falling apart and they feel like right now they need your help because they need that they need guidance and that da, da, da. it's like well actually if it's that bad there's been something that's been going wrong for a while right and so you being up at two or three in the morning isn't going to fix the issue it might bring comfort to the person which you know there's an and and also to that but at the same time it's like okay well i i'm sorry i can't talk to you right now i'm sorry that you're having a hard time let me pray with you but i would love to talk to you about this at this time and set up an, you know a time to do that right or is that wrong no yeah i think that's right you know it's i think if if you're gonna hold people's heart um and and to care for their heart and you truly do care about somebody then yeah you're gonna say yeah we let's make time for that it's not right now but you know i i'm looking at my calendar and i have next week and you know or i have whatever like or if you really feel like you need to and like i'm gonna reschedule i'm gonna move stuff around and mm -hmm. make time for you you know but the other side of this is that um you know, some people will suck the life out of you. This is why we're talking. This is why I think it's so important that we talk about this, because if you don't know how to have boundaries, people will suck the life out of you, especially people like my bride, like like you. Me? Yes. I'm going to suck the life out of people. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. People Did will I suck the him? life out of you. Oh, people suck the life out of me. I'm my like, oh, gosh, that's so harsh. Like, what did I do to you? <laughs> Man, no, ball and chain or bride? Which one am I? Uh, yes, you are my beautiful bride. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but you, people that people that are like you, the nice ones, the kind ones, the loving ones, the ones who really go out of their way to love people that, honestly, some people don't even pay attention to. Like, that's you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're the person. Thank you. you. That's you. That's your personality. <laughs> and anybody who knows Nancy has hopefully experienced Nancy in that way because, you know, you are somebody who you're going to go out of your way for people. However, what, what comes with that is people will take advantage of that. And not, maybe not even knowing they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Maybe some do. But they look at you and people like you and people with your personality. And they'll be like, Nancy's so nice. Of course she's going to answer her phone or of course she's going to give me a ride when I ask her or if of course she's going to let me stay at her house or of course she's going to fill in the blank right mm -hmm. because she's nice Nancy now the 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 in the hard part and I know it because it's it's because I'm married to you and I've experienced you and you, your personality is that it it is hard for you to say no it is. And it is hard for you to... If I can do it, it's very hard for me to say no. If it comes down to an inconvenience for a moment, I'd rather be inconvenienced for a few minutes than to say no because I'm able to do it. Now, that's held in tension depending on why it's an inconvenience. It's an inconvenience because I'm actually... I, I need to guard this time because it is something that I'm doing that's important and la-da-da-da. 
or is it just because it's like i really don't want to have to go to that side of town right now you know and if it's just because out of my own personal like i'd really rather not but i'm i'm going to i'm going to lay that lay that down because god calls me to serve first and that's usually what i live by so that's but if it's something that you know, I, I'm sorry, I have to make an appointment, la, da, da, so I can't because it's important that my kid goes to this particular appointment or whatever, then that's where it becomes, you know, hard. It's still hard for me to tell them no, but it's easier because my understanding is it's I actually have to get my kid to this appointment. This isn't something that I can just move. I'm sorry that I can't help you right now like that, but it still is hard and it crushes my heart as a person, but I have to understand, like, I'm, I'm not saying no to be malicious. I actually have a really good reason. And sure. so, so, yeah, no, that's, that's good. And so, you know, and again, my point being is that for, for people with a like, you know, a, a like personality like yourself, um, you, you, it's important for you to have, to know where your boundaries are. I need to know my why. Why do I have my boundaries? Because yeah. that's going to help me keep them a lot easier because I do. I tend to like that's why I think I like perimeters because I I have these ideas that are nice and I like it. But if I don't know my why as to why I have them, then it's easy for me to push them back and push them back. But then before I know it, I don't have a boundary anymore and I'm overwhelmed. I'm in overwhelm because I've let so and so and so and so and I'm doing this, this and that. And I forgot my why and my focus got moved. And then before I know it, it's been four days and I didn't do any at all of the schooling that I would have liked to get done for my kids or didn't get the things done that I need to that have deadlines and let it down. So I'm scrambling to get these things done because I've put other things in the place where I shouldn't have. And that that's a fault of my personality. But I don't I don't hate that about myself. I just want to be better about managing that part of myself because you're right. I am a yes person. So and that's not a bad thing, but it can become a bad thing if it means that it's bringing chaos because I'm not willing to put my priorities in order. And I think that's, you know, you said it perfect. The word priorities, I think, goes hand in hand with boundaries mm-hmm. is that, you you know, if you know what your priorities are, you won't necessarily have too hard of a time setting up boundaries. Right. Because if, if this is a priority, you know, and you use the example of you homeschooling the kids, homeschooling is your priority. And so mm-hmm. if you know that that's your priority priority and that, you know, from whatever it is, you know, 10 to 2 or 10 to 3, whatever, that, whatever time you take to do it then it's not really going to be too hard for you to know this is my, this is, you know, my, I'm drawing a square right now on the table, Mm -hmm. but this is my boundary (laughs) and, or my perimeter or whatever you want to call it. Uh And so this is the thing I'm going to guard. And this isn't, this isn't for me to uh, be mean. This isn't for me, whatever. This is for me protecting the thing that is important to me. That is Uh, my kids education Mm -hmm. and my kids in general and I've also learned too, like with my boundaries I have my absolutes and my negotiables yeah where are my absolute boundaries and what is my why to those as well as okay but these things I can be negotiable on and why because then it's easier for me to kind of when I'm going to move something around these are the things that I'm willing to move around but these things I'm not and I haven't been perfect at that but I think the more the better that I get at that the more peace I can keep because I'm going to feel like I'm being successful because at the end of the week when I haven't done that, I feel like I I realize that I have um, I have to battle my own internal thoughts of like feeling um, inadequate or feeling maybe as an inconvenience or la da da da. And I'm start to question or doubt my ability to be an at home, you know, teacher and la da da and all those things. So or the ministry that I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. Like I said, I begin to doubt those things and question those things when that was never my place to do that. Cause you know, I forget what God says about those things and, and my why I started to pursue them. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous territory because then I can start, if I don't catch those things, it's one thing to, con- to catch those things and, and lay them down before the Lord. But if I notice that there's a continual pattern, what am I going to do to set myself up for success so that this is something that I can be victorious in versus constantly having to battle these things? And I'm realizing time management is a lot to do with that. And time management comes with my ability to understand my why and my boundaries so that I can hold them better so that I can be successful in the things that I want to attain. That's really good. Is that good? That's good. Okay. Uh, let's talk about for a second setting up boundaries with people that are unhealthy. 
because I think that this is something that maybe doesn't get talked about a lot. And I mean, we we've obviously heard heard this a lot because of our schooling and and whatnot. But I would venture to say that churches um, and and well, I mean, just people in general are more focused on how do we love more and less focused on well what about what if the person is just a jerk you know or what if the person is just a loud mouth or what if the person you know and i know that you and i have both experienced this where uh when when we're we've hung out with whoever you know so, somebody and we realize oh this person talks a lot about other people so this person is probably talking about me when we're not around. That's like the worst feeling when you're around somebody and then all of a sudden like they leave and you kind of feel a little bit like, ooh, what are they saying about what is, exa- me yeah, like, I when know. I'm not there? Yeah. And so that so so I know that you and I have have purposely ha- had to, had to set up and this hasn't happened in a while, but in, in past years, there has been people in our lives where we've said, OK. These people do not protect our hearts, do not care about our hearts. They have not shown us uh, a bit that they care about our well-being. Mm-mm. Therefore, we will love them, but we will love them from way over here, right? <laughs> like, like we we will we will love them from afar, and that is where it starts, and that's where it ends. Mm-hmm. And that's not because I'm a bad Christian. It's not because I'm a bad person. That's because I care so much about my family and I care so much about my heart. And, and I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm unapologetic about caring about my heart because I need to make sure that I'm taking care of my heart to yeah, be the do. best Eric that I can be. Absolutely. And so if and that's if, not a selfish thing, that's actually very selfless. If you, like that's, that's something that I think that we get backwards in this society today is the self care. Like for some reason, self care gets put way on the end of priorities, including for myself. Like, but it's so important that we're taking care of ourselves, even uh, not, not even on a, just a spiritual level, but from a, a mental and a physical perspective as well. Because if we're not doing that, then but yet we think that we can continue to give out what are we giving if we're not being filled up or like feeling good you know what i mean it's hard then that's when the overwhelm and the anxiety comes and people wonder like why am i feeling so overwhelmed why am i always so tired which i ask that all the time like i'm so tired i'm only like 33 (laughs) and i'm like feel like i just can't even hardly stay up right now and that's really sad because i'm only 33 yeah but you also need more sun I do so, need more sun. That is true. It's a whole other topic. <laughs> my point being, and, and, and yes, you said it perfectly. Yes, self care is super important. And yeah. so, and if I see somebody, or if I notice somebody could, I, I'm getting the impression that they can care less about my heart or about my mm-hmm. wife's heart. Then you're, you're, you know, I'll love you mm-hmm. because that's what Jesus tells me I have to do. Um, but loving you looks like something loving you look, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, and I say that jokingly, like I, I will love you, but you're, you'll you, be cordial. You're going to be outside of, of, you know, my realm of, uh, which means what does that mean? I, I didn't finish my thought. Oh, sorry. So you're going to be outside of, you know, my, um, my, my circle, if you will, you're going to be outside of, of anywhere that can influence me or that can, um, you know, touch me in any way or, or any of that, th- any, any of that, like you're, you're, you're over there. You like know. a leper? No, 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 not like a leper, <laughs> but you might as well be a, you know, uh, Donald Trump, you know, somebody <gasps> who, um, why was that a shocking thing to say? I thought you were just being mean towards Donald Trump. No, no, no. Like because you don't know him and you're not like in because his I don't of influence. know him. Gotcha. You might as well be somebody I don't know. Gotcha. You somebody who I know about, but I don't know. I don't have. A oh, okay, that about. makes sense. You're way out there. <laughs> okay, that my was wife an overreaction. is very big overreaction. Um, um, do you I need am. me to? Did you want me to answer that question? Yes, I think that would be great. So, like, does that mean that? So it's more or less they're going to be probably somebody that you only interact with at social events and stuff, and not necessarily somebody that you invite to your home. Or what does that yes, mean? Yes, that's exactly it. I'm not going to go out of my way to schedule time with you to, to, to hang out with you okay okay and 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 
that's because again, and this is a very extreme, not ex- very extreme, but this is a, 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 a extreme case that if you've shown time and time again that you don't care about my well-being or my family's well-being, yeah, then I don't need you in my life. And that doesn't mean that again, that doesn't mean that I hate you. I'm not going to use that word. That just means that you're no longer going to be in any sphere of influence in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm setting up a boundary with you that that I'm keeping safe what's in here. Right. And so and okay. you're on the outside of that. Mm-hmm. And so and, and maybe down the road, you know, God can do anything. I know I've had relationships where I thought we will never be. I will never be friends with this person right. because they hurt me and blah, blah, blah. And. A year behold. later, we're friends. We're friends with them, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know, that was interesting how that worked out. But, but you know, for the time being, because I've seen your unhealthy behavior, I'm not going to allow you to affect my life, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to allow you to affect my family's life. And so, and that you know, obviously that comes with, and, and I think that's okay. Like we have to be people. Um, we we being a Christian doesn't mean that you get to just be crapped on or a rug that gets to get walked on all the time. Like that's not what being a Christian looks like. Okay. That's not what Jesus did. That's not what his disciples did. They loved and they loved unconditionally, but it wasn't, it wasn't just, I'm a Christian. And so that means that I'm just going to take all your crap and you can talk about me and you can, you know, whatever, like I, I and, and we, I have to allow you to be in my life. Like, well, yeah. And let's talk about that. Cause not even just from like a negative standpoint of, um, talking bad about you or maybe talking bad about other people and bad behaviors. This is also like physical and mental boundaries as well. Cause like even in God's generals, that book, we see all these awesome, amazing, fantastic people who are seeing movements of the Lord, like never before revival happening, but then they wind up you know, dying due to exhaustion and malnutrition and or something really silly because they weren't willing to take care of their, they were so far on the spiritual side and wanting to make sure that this is being maintained that they forget who the maintainer is. Like they are a vessel for that, but if that vessel isn't being taken care of on a physical and a mental and spiritual standpoint, it's not going to last. Our bodies though we carry kingdom with us and there is that of course i believe in it but you also have to feed it you also have to make sure it's getting sleep and that it's being taken care of that your self-care is so important Mm -hmm. and so like in what are we teaching our kids and the generations behind us if we're willing to work ourselves like become workhorses and not stop for family time or not stop to eat a meal and let it it's a horrible message that we're sending to the world saying you're not important. This, everything else is but you. And that sucks. Cause then what are you living for? What are you working for? Why would you, why would you want to exist with that mentality of not being important and just it just being another day or that this thing in front of you is so absolutely important that it takes precedence over who you are as a person and therefore interrupts your ability to either have relationship outside of whatever it is that you're doing. So I think holding all these things in tension, realizing it's not always from a negative place of people being, you know, not very nice to you or da da da, but just in general, like what is taking your attention and are you able to take care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually before you try to pour out elsewhere? Yeah, no, I agree. Self-care is, is super important. You know, there's a whole other side of this that we haven't really touched on, and that is having such strong boundaries that <laughs> you're in <laughs> you're <laughs> you, you are unobtainable you are um unreachable you uh don't serve anywhere you don't do anything and that's the other side of it that is very not good dangerous it's dangerous and so although boundaries i agree with them and i think people need to have them i also think that first and foremost if you call yourself a christian your uh one of your goals and one of your one of your uh, mandates on your life is that you're a servant Mm -hmm. and so um it doesn't matter what title you have or what level of leadership you are in you know your servanthood needs to be of highest priority and so um you know and and it's like well what does that mean because you just Mm -hmm. said that i'm supposed to have boundaries it's like well (laughs) you have to learn how to do both you have to learn how what it looks like to serve and be willing to lay down a boundary at a moment mm-hmm. and say, OK, this needs to get done. 
and or this person needs me it's like you were saying like if somebody were asking you for a ride or asking you for a favor or whatever Mm -hmm. that you would be willing to move something that you have um you know set up already or or whatever in order to serve that person absolutely and i think that although that can become an unhealthy uh, cycle if you're you're doing always doing Mm -hmm. that um i think that it's it's important that we keep in mind that you're it's okay for you to 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 lay that down for sure and to serve someone mm-hmm. and and i would think that you know i would think that that would make god's heart very happy if you were able to be selfless in those moments you know and and this is this is something that i like I you did for me today like i did for you today <laughs> and you're my wife and and you know i'm not saying like i'm obligated to that but of course i'm going to do it for you point being is that is that it's it's important that we continue to to serve even in the midst of uh, having boundaries that, mm-hmm. that we, we need to have both. We need to make sure that we're serving. We need to make sure that our hearts are willing to give, um, but that it's not so far on the end that we're giving everything we have. And I do remember the story you were talking about. I don't know if it was John G. Lake, but um, it was one of those revivals, revivalists in the book, uh, God's Generals, mm-hmm. where uh, he... His, his wife starved to death. And I think his family starved to death because literally they were giving everything away to feed the poor mm-hmm. and to feed the hungry. And people were coming to their house and mm-hmm. asking for food and they were giving them. And literally this family starved to death mm-hmm. because in the namesake of God now, are the riches in heaven? Absolutely. Did they get to heaven? And, and, and you know, was God saying, hey, that was great? Absolutely. But I mean, I, I would venture to say that God might have been like, hmm, maybe you should have taken care of your family a little bit <laughs> better. Like I'm so glad you did that, but I don't know. I, I won't know until I get to heaven. And, and right. For all we know, we could be way off the mark, but <laughs> I don't think so. I think God calls us to be in relationship. God, that's so weird to call him that <laughs> Papa. Papa. <laughs> no, it's not weird to call him God. It's actually very appropriate. Um, but anyway, yes, I think, he calls us to be in a relationship. He calls for us to take care of our temples and that looks like something. So knowing what that looks like for you as an individual, if you don't ask him or ask yourself, like what makes you come alive? Why is this important to you so that you can remember these things and go after them with everything in you instead of compromising because compromising is dangerous. Yeah. Um, now, like you said, there's times when you make sacrifices, but knowing that that's, that's a time, like that's just a little bit here and there, but not to make an, a, a habit out of it. The, the, the exception, the it's exception. The exception. Mm-hmm. It's not the rule. And so knowing your absolutes and your negotiables and sometimes maybe having to be a little bit, um, what's it called i guess uh letting up a little bit on your absolutes on occasion but that has to be an absolute occasional thing but yeah just knowing your your limits right and i think that this could this is this is important in every aspect of your life if you're a single person learning how to have boundaries in your life is really important because you have so much free time, mm-hmm. you know, if, I mean, meaning compared to a married person with kids, you don't have that to, to worry about or that to, um, in, in your, um, in your life. And so it's just you. So learning what your boundaries look like and making sure that you don't have such strong boundaries that you're inaccessible, but for a married couple as well, and whether you have kids or not, having boundaries is going to, help immensely not necessarily with each other i'm not saying that i'm saying more with the outside world Mm -hmm. so making sure like hey are you scheduling date nights are you saying like hey once a week or sorry once 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 a week is fine but you know what one every other week or once a month you Mm -hmm. know and you're like this date like we're not moving this date this is our non-negotiable we're making sure that we are going on a date you know, every other Friday or ever, which is something that I have not done well. We no, have not done well. we have not done well. Right. I haven't either. Okay. But, but my point being is that, is that this is going to help, you know, having boundaries with your fa- within your family, you know, making sure like, Hey, 
this day, like I know um, a, a family friends of ours here and, and, you know, talking to the dad the other day and he, he was telling me Fridays is the day that I'm, I'm making sure that is for our family yeah. and making sure that the girls aren't, you know, uh, planning anything on those days and making sure that, why, you know, the wife isn't planning anything like that's the day we do stuff as family. And I love that because me it's too. like, that is a, a, a great boundary to have knowing like, this is the day that we are, you know. I mean, even so much so to the point, which I loved, that they make sure they have paper plates on that day. So that way, the by the end of the day, they're not overwhelmed with having to clean up and do a bunch of dishes and stuff. But that things can just be easy, easy for the family to be able just to just be. And yep. I loved that. I thought that was so fantastic. Can we put them on blast who they are? Give them credit. Yeah, sure. It's uh, Michael and Kaya Oprah. Shout out Michael and Kaya Oprah. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> It's late. We need to go to bed. Um, Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, uh, they have set up something great in their family, which I think is with it, which I think is amazing. Whether they know it or not, like that is that is a a boundary and something that's protecting, Mm -hmm. which I think is great. Yeah. You know, and so um, and I know I know many of our families like that that are uh, protecting their families and i think i think we we, we just have to you know mm-hmm. in this day and age again when if you especially have young kids like gosh i'm looking at our kids and looking at our oldest and you know look well our oldest and our youngest really are the ones that shock me you know because this our our oldest was a baby 11 years ago and now she's 11 and turning into a woman our youngest is turning two next week Ugh, and she mm-hmm. was just a baby you know, and so it's like it, it puts it in perspective to me that, man, I have to protect my time with them and protect my time um, with this family, because before I know it, we're going to be old fogies by ourselves with our it. grandkids visiting us <laughs> every, you know, so why often. are you talking like I'm this right saying, now? I'm just saying I'm not ready for the GK word. OK, we need to just GK. <laughs> we bring it down. OK, I just don't even. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just a whisper of time. I blinked one too many times. And um, you're right. Our firstborn is in her double digits and 11 going into womanhood and just fantastic all around. And then our son, his little voice is kind of doing some interesting things <laughs> lately. And it's so cute. I mean, and I'm like, I'm trying to figure out, are you coming down with a little bit of a cold or are you like, but it's more of a, it's deepening. It's kind of going between. So I'm like, oh, no, he's coming into that age where, you know, things and, and it just his emotions, too. He's starting to do think you know, Sissy's kind of starting to average out a little bit. But now he's kind of entering into the whole like not, be, you know, having these emotional outbursts all of a sudden. Part of it is his personality. But I think right now it's that hormonal like he's he's entering into a season of gosh. Why? Why does this happen? What happened to our little, like, little fat babies? I don't know. No, they're skinny, big-headed babies. Skinny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think um, I think we're good on boundaries. I mean, we said a lot, and there's so much more we could say. You mm-hmm. know, I think I think the takeaway is is that find what works for you, but make sure that there's somewhere in your life that mm-hmm. you're setting up boundaries because if you are a boundaryless person. I can only imagine um, the many ways that you're getting pulled Mm -hmm. or the many ways that you're shutting people down because whatever, you know, and so it's just it's just really important to know your absolutes, like Nancy was saying, and know your yeses and know your whys, um, because that's going to help you a lot in in living, you know, leading a successful life, leading a a, dare I say stressless life. But, you know, it wouldn't be you know, there's a fulfilling life. A fulfilling life, yeah. But I think that you know, I, 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 maybe your life won't be completely stress free, but it definitely will help. Mm-hmm. It will help, mm-hmm. you know. Um. So, boundaries aren't bad. It's boundaries not a bad word. Are not bad. With all due respect to our senior leader, I think it's okay to have a different perspective, and I understand his. I hear him. He's oh. right in what he says, but it's not right in every aspect does that make sense is that right to say i'm not going to say anything bad about our senior leader i didn't say anything you bad did, about him so okay cut that part and we're nope, gonna it's <laughs> <saying> it. <laughs> not ever. 
James, I love you so much, and I love that you don't like that word. I think it's great. Podcast. Yes, he does. He, he told me care. he does. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Who's saying what about our pastor? <laughs> Fighting words. No, um, I really do. I love him, and I love that he cares so much to want to go into word studies and finding out like where they come from and why they got put in, put into place to have a better understanding of what they're meant for. And so I love that. Absolutely. Well. Hey, thank you guys again for listening to the Lopez sit down. Hopefully anything we said tonight made sense. It is so late. I'm so tired. And, um, but again, and I have a second wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're away. I'm going to bed. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I'll but stay up and keep you guys busy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> late nights with Nancy. Late night with Nancy. Um, oh, but, but again, make sure that you guys are sharing our podcast. You know, we love hearing, you know, again, shout out Liam from Alaska. Um, you know, we, we, and I actually last week too, I got a, uh, message from somebody up in Pasco, Washington, you know, and so s- some way or another people are hearing about our podcast and I love it. That's cool. And so continue sharing, letting people know, you know, rate us. If you're listening on, um, you know, iTunes, make sure you rate us. And uh, I just found out, too, that I, I can put this on YouTube. So our, our podcast will be on YouTube as well. And so um, just as, like just audio. Th- that's the thing. People listen to podcasts on YouTube. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, welcome to, to 2000, 2019. It happens. And so uh, <laughs> okay. but share like make sure that you're telling people about this and we hope you're encouraged we hope that you got some insight from this and hey again like nancy was saying in the beginning if you have questions or you have comments or you have disagreements um let us know dm us uh email us don't email us we're We're not not. offended by (laughs) um, disagreements we'd love to be called out and uh have an opportunity to look at our perspective and decide if this is what we still believe or if we're open to other things we are open to be wrong we are i don't feel like i'm wrong though i don't feel like we're wrong either (laughs) but (laughs) i haven't had anybody challenge well except james but even then, it wasn't necessarily a challenge. It's more of a, let's talk about this. And I liked that. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, cool. Well, until next time. Cool. Just kidding. <laughs> I love you, Nance. Love you, too.